take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All right, we got the five big ones. The five big lies that were at the debate. The Kamala Harris and Trump debate. And if you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. You need to go watch it. Everybody clipped it or just watch the whole thing and think for yourself. And then go do your own fact checking. But the moderators from ABC didn't fact check them. Fact check Harris. Zero nada. Zero nada. Fact checked. And obviously when they did fact check Trump, they were wrong. They were wrong. They were wrong on one of the issues of uh, the late term, the baby being born and setting it to the side. The governor in Virginia passing a bill. Well, they're not going to resuscitate the kid. It's true. I don't care if you're a libertarian, a vegetarian, a Republican, Democrat, whatever. Facts are facts. You can't get around it. Think for yourself. All right. So I've got, I'm going to start out with a couple of clips from the, um, from the debate. And then we're going to get into some, some other clips. I've got a couple of two shorts after that of, uh, you know what, of this woman is doing a conference on abortions, right? And then there's going to be another one of her going over the whole five, right, in in order. And uh, let's take a look at it. All right, here we go. Have abortion in the ninth month. They even have, and you can look at the governor of West Virginia, the previous governor of West Virginia, not the current governor, is doing an excellent job, but the governor before, he said the baby will be born and we will decide what to do with the baby. In other words, we'll execute the baby. And that's why I did that, because that predominates, because they're radical. The Democrats are radical in that. And her vice presidential pick, which I think was a horrible pick, by the way, for our country, because he is really out of it. But her vice presidential pick says abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. He also says execution after birth. It's execution, no longer abortion, because the baby is born, is okay. And that's not okay with me. Hence the vote. Except for Trump, Miss. You support any restrictions on a woman's right to an abortion? I absolutely support reinstating the protections of Roe v. Wade. And as you rightly mentioned, nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. You should ask, will she allow abortion in the eighth month, ninth month, seventh month? Come on. Okay, would you do that? Why don't you ask why, her that question? Why don't you answer That's the, the problem. question? Would you because veto? under Roe v. Wade, answer the question, you, could, you, you could do abortions in the seventh month, the eighth month, the ninth That's month, and probably after birth. Just look at the governor, former governor of, of Virginia. The governor of Virginia said we put the baby aside and then we determine what we want to do with the baby. President Trump, thank you. And I give tremendous credit to those six justices. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. And that is a lie. That is a lie. And she continues, Harris, if y'all had watched it, please, I encourage you to go. <clears throat> Where she says, will you veto the bill for Roe v. Wade and this, this kind of craziness? He doesn't have to. He put it in the hands of the states, people. Each state can, the people, you, whatever state you're in, can vote on this. If the majority of the state wants it, then it's going to be. If the majority of other states do not want this in their state, then then the people have spoken. Isn't that what America is all about? It's about the people? Come on. 
this is a twisted way that the liberal libtards do to confuse people. Oh, he's going to just ban everything. He's going to be a dictator and all this nonsense. No, it's in the hands of the states. And that's where it should be. I'm so glad. I can vote on things. You should be too. All right, here we go. Madam Vice President, I want to get your response to President Trump. Let's start with late-term abortion. Not late-stage abortions. Yes, actually there are. Here. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, my editing skills are, are phenomenal. Um, <laughs> anyway, it would be nice if I had a tech. <laughs> um, this is the clip of her. She's going to um, take some questions from the audience. Now I, I put these before the whole uh, her doing the 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 big five, but I thought this was very relevant and cr some crazy crazy people have delusional viewpoints on abortion. It it just baffles the mind. I'm gonna back this up a hair. All right, we're gonna back it up just a hair. And okay, there we go. All right. Baby after it's born. Madam Vice President, I want to get your response to President Trump. Let's start with late-term abortion. Not late-stage abortions. Yes, actually there are. Here, I'm so glad you asked. I'm going to call an abortionist for you, ma'am. Call an abortionist? What does that mean? William Hearn, Boulder Abortion Clinic. Thank you for calling. He might stop. Dr. Hearn's answering service. How may I help you? Hi, yeah, I um, just figured out I was pregnant today, and um, I'm, like, really far along. Like, I'm, like, 30 weeks. Can I schedule an abortion with you all? Uh, yeah, let me see if I can help with this one moment here. I mean, right now you're calling the answering service, so I can't actually schedule that appointment. What I can do is route this, like, put, put in the request and just have the office call you back. Sure, that's fine. It, on the website here, it says, the website says third trimester abortion. So I guess that would be, uh, have to yep. Mm -hmm. Accurate, yeah. It is accurate. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, accurate. It's on the website. It was accurate on the website. All right, so this next clip, I found disturbing. They're going to talk about Pregnant women crossing the border. All right, here we go. I think that the children that are apprehended at the border that are in U.S. government care, do you think babies who are going to die should be resuscitated and be given care? Yes. Do you believe that a baby who's born alive during an abortion in a Planned Parenthood should get care? What's the difference? She comes across the border and she has a baby in her arms that's dying. Should we pay for that child's health care? Yes. If a child is born alive during an abortion procedure, because sometimes the abortionist misses the heart, should the abortionist have to provide health care to that child? No. Why? They've already determined that it's not a baby. I know you're telling me that science has determined one thing, but... How can an abortion... Okay, so she's saying uh, they've they've they the between the mother and the doctor they have determined that it is not a baby, but the woman crossing the border. This is all hypothetical, but it 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 clearly shows the mindset of some of these libtards who have been brainwashed. This woman, a, a hypothetical woman, crosses the border, gives birth. Her her child needs immediate medical attention, or it is going to die. But an aborted baby who is born alive, they're saying no, don't resuscitate it. Are you serious? What what planet are we on? This is disturbing. We should all be disturbed by this. It's determined it's not a baby. <laughs> but if it has been born, so if this baby comes out of utero and the digoxin hasn't been successful, and this baby is alive. Well, first of all, I think that's a really rare Thank you. It is rare, but it does happen. So do you think it's a baby? No. Do you think o'clock? We have to go, right? All right, we're fixing to get into the full 
uh, section of the conference where she hits the the big five is what I'm calling it the big five lies from the from the debate but guys this is the mindset of of people obviously this young woman clearly thinks well they did de- they determined that it's it's not human it's not a baby therefore if it's born alive it needs to die this is absolutely insanity very very disturbing here we go well i had a little spiel for you guys about the five lies that we heard um at the de- at the presidential debate last night um and i can go through them quickly do you want to do that i feel bad for the pro-lifers who are like i thought i was going to get something out of this but uh, like what like the unh day yeah, okay. There were five lies that we heard at the first presidential debate, and I thought it was only fair since since the pro-life movement's coming out and saying directly what it is our goal is, uh, I thought it was only fair to come out and directly say what those who advocate abortion, their goal is, um, and what you're not hearing at the presidential debate, what you didn't hear at the DNC. Uh, the first lie that we heard last night was that abortions don't happen in ninth month of pregnancy. Um, as you saw when I called earlier the night, I uh, asked for a 30 week abortion. As I said, if you go to my Twitter, there's a video of me calling an abortion facility in Maryland, scheduling, I actually scheduled a 34 week abortion. Uh, um, that's the eighth month of pregnancy. I didn't ask for nine, but I could. There are eight states, nine states actually, plus Washington DC, uh, that have no legal limits on when abortions can be committed in pregnancy. They are Alaska, Vermont, Oregon, New Mexico, Colorado, Minnesota, Michigan, Maryland, New Jersey. Uh, Minnesota actually changed the law in 2022 um, when Governor Wall signed a new abortion law in effect um, that allows abortion up until the moment of birth. Um, the lo- okay, the reason, and I'm just going to iterate here and we'll get back to this, that the reason why the left wants it back into the Supreme Court is so they can continue to do this. Mm-hmm. Why would you not want states to have their own voice, have the people have their own voice? What are they afraid of? Are they afraid that the people are going to be against it? I mean, that, just think about that for a moment. Why would you not, why would you want to put, and then they always claim the government doesn't need to be in the doctor's office. But apparently the liberals want to be in the doctor's office. The liberals want to back into the hands of the courts of the, the, the Supreme Court of the land to make to blanket it for everyone. So why are you saying in one breath, government doesn't need to be in there with 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 the woman and the doctor, but yet you you do. You're you're just saying you're just lying. You're, you're being deceitful, deceptive about it and your wording, which I see clearly right through it. If you want the government to get out of the way, which most of us always want the government, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Let the people decide. Now, there's already been some states who have voted for it. It's a shame. It's sad. But they did. They did. It's crazy. But that, I just wanted to make that point that they, they're they hypocrites. Local news station there and our fact checkers, K-H-A-R-E-11 News, found in 2024 uh, that the law does indeed allow abortion up until the moment of birth. There's literally zero prohibitions. Um, there's been many testimonials. There's a book that was written called Why I Am an Abortion Doctor by Suzanne 
Pompamia, who's a board member of NAF, the National Abortion Federation, who openly admits a woman came into an abortion facility saying she did not want to have a baby. The abortion worker was so inept to her job and said, I looked in her cervix, there's something there, something's not right. And they found out it was the baby's head. And they still committed the abortion in the abortion facility. And this woman thought it's such a good story, she wrote a book about it. Um, as I quoted earlier, uh, CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which we don't have a national abortion reporting law, so all their abortion stats are actually lowered because California and New York, which are the two largest abortion states, don't re report their abortion numbers to the CDC, said that there were more than 10,370 preborn babies in 2023 uh, who were killed after 21 weeks, meaning they could have survived and lived outside the womb. Now, the libtards also don't want stats reported. Why? Why? Why would you not want government, or not governments, but uh, clinics and stuff to report on how many abortions were made in those cities and in the, and in the state? Don't, don't you want to know? I mean, I do. How, how many people are you killing? How many people you've just wiped off the face of the earth that could have helped with the population? Oh, but no. You want to count how many COVID victims, how many COVID, yeah, COVID victims, how many COVID cases, how many flu cases, but something as heinous as this, you do not want a count because they know it's wrong. Why would they not want it counted? The numbers are already mind-boggling. Since Roe v. Wade came into effect, millions upon millions of children killed. And we could have had generations of them right now. And we're having an aging population, people. We're in trouble because we're doing this, this insanity. We're doing this insanity. I just wanted to make that point. Lie number two we heard the first presidential debate was that there is no state in which after abortion after birth is legal. Um, Colorado, Michigan, California have actually recently enacted laws that include a new legal term called pregnancy outcome. These states have moved to make abortion a right uh, and allow women to have abortions for any reason, no questions asked, um, based on uh, undefined terms using pregnancy outcome. Now, that is a good point she's making. <clears throat> because, you know, during the debate, now, I don't, I don't agree with Trump on this. I don't think there should be any abortion anywhere, anytime, period. Okay, that's, that's just me. That's my opinion. His opinion is, he, he said, well, I'm going with Reagan's opinion on incest, uh, R-A-P-E, okay? Can't say things on, the, uh, on YouTube, okay? And health of the mother. All right. So, the left has always said, yeah, it's all about the health of the mother and her, her right to her body and this, this kind of stuff. But that's not what's happening. That's a small percentage. It's such minute that the three things that I just named off actually happen. What's happening is, is the bigger percentage is for no reason. These people are having abortions for no reason. Oh, I know what the reason is, is because they're selfish. They haven't been taught that there's consequences for sex. So now this is the easy way out. That they don't have to deal with the consequences of their actions. And the numbers for just, uh, for that reason, and that's not a reason. Now is it? Now how, now if we did pass a law, maybe we should, I don't know. For the three that I named that, that Trump is for, incest, R-A-P-E, and health of the mother, that's it. That's the only way you can get, get one. Okay, so say they pass across the blanket law, that that's it. Even though states could still completely ban it from their state because the people can vote on it. 
then that should probably be how it should be. So you would have to come in and prove it. But now, no, no, no. You could come in with any reason at any stage of the pregnancy. It's insane. It's disturbing. Oh, my God. The legal scholars believe using this term uh, means that as long as there is a dead baby, it's considered a pregnancy outcome. So even if the child is born alive in the abortion facility, that is not illegal because it's the pregnancy outcome that she intended, which was to terminate the life of their child. Um, deliberately or uh, killing the baby through negligence is not explicitly excluded under the rules and under the law, which is extremely scary. How about all the stories we hear about young girls that have a child and they, they, they throw it in a trash can, they throw it in a dumpster, they bury it in the backyard. Y'all know you've heard these stories. And guess what they do? They charge her with murder. So, I'm going to say it. What what do you think the difference is if the abortion laws are saying, oh, yeah, she the baby can be born alive and we're just going to set it to the side. We're going to keep it comfortable. We'll resuscitate it if the mom says, yeah, but they put it in another room. Probably if she heard it cry, she'd say, oh, my God, it's a human being. Who knows what's going on there? But again, there you go. So why two two outcomes? Why two different views on this? It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, we know from Douglas Carpin, the famous late-term abortionist uh, north of Denver, I mean Dallas, he openly, openly advocated and talked about the, the, the abortions he committed where children, because he was really bad at his job, uh, killed many women, the babies that were born alive. Uh, Kermit Gosnell, when he was on trial in Philadelphia after he was arrested by the pro-choice district attorney in Philadelphia for illegally prescribing narcotic drugs to women having untrained medical staff, admitted his abortion workers admitted multiple babies were born alive alive in his abortion facility. In fact, in Minnesota, um, we know there was a law in place uh, before 2022 or 2021 that Governor Tim Wall signed, but before that law, there had to be a report filed at every abortion facility if a child came out breathing during an abortion, during Governor Walls' uh, tenure as governor, at least before this law went to effect, which said you don't have to report it, at least eight babies, according to the state of Minnesota, were born and died gasping for breath. Lie number three we heard from the president. Guys, that is disturbing. Lord have mercy, which I don't think he's going to. On, on these people who allow this to happen and for the people who are letting it happen to them. And first presidential debate was that pro-life laws make it criminal for doctors to provide life-saving health care. Uh, Kamala Harris did a whole quote about this. That has been fact-checked and proven by the American, the Association of American Medical Colleges, AMAC, who quote state, Every state has an exception that allows for abortion needed to save the life of a pregnant person. They're obviously liberal because they don't say woman. Um, AMAC goes further to say, quote, no date, to date, no physician has been criminally prosecuted in any state for providing abortion that was due to a medical emergency. So that's 
inaccurate. I would argue uh, every single case we've seen come before the news media of women saying they didn't receive care uh, was not for a life-threatening emergency. Uh, there was one case in Texas that was just pure medical negligence. The hospital was not treating the woman um, and that doctor should be held accountable. Uh, we heard another lie at the debate that IVF treatment is unavailable under pro-life laws. Unfortunately, that is inaccurate. Every single pro-life law uh, that has passed in our country explicitly has a carve out to allow human beings to be created in a petri dish and treated as human property to be disposed of, implanted, uh, researched, or thrown away upon part of their parents' wishes. The Alabama Supreme Court decision did not uh, make uh, IVF illegal in Alabama, despite uh, most what most people thought. The Alabama Supreme Court decision was brought by parents whose children in petri dishes were killed because the IVF clinic did not have proper, proper safety protocols to ensure crazy people couldn't get back in their lab. A crazy person went back in the lab, dropped the petri dishes, and killed humans. The I, I'm not for this IVF thing. Because if you're a Christian and you believe life begins at the moment of conception, so now they're saying, well, some crazy guy comes into this clinic and slams some Petri dishes on the ground. He's done committed murder. But yet a woman can go get an abortion and it's not murder. This is some twisted ass shit, if you ask me. Now, everybody's going to agree with me and that's just fine. You're, you have your own free will from the grace of God to choose what you believe and what path you take in your life. So, the IVF, yeah, there's women who want to have children and have to be artificially inseminated. I don't know. That right there, if they've got a whole bunch of them, What do you do? What does she say? What does her and her husband say? Well, let's just do three of them because we want three children. If three of them take, then we'll just implant each three each time she, she has it. Not this hundreds and thousands of them. That they're just creating human beings in a Petri dish. It's, it's like a mad, mad world of science. Nobody's going to look at it. Well, there, it's just a glob in a Petri dish. No, not if it's been inseminated. When does life begin? God says he knew you before you were even born. So all of these people are born. They're I'm calling them people. So I'm I'm not I don't I'm not for this. I'm not for this at all because whenever technology, which could be a good thing, becomes corrupt. I mean, look at Michael J. Fox from years ago. What was it? 14 years ago, 15 years ago. Where he was wanting, and he even said, well, there's some moral issues here with this. That he wanted embryonic stem cell research to help cure his Parkinson's. Are you insane? So where are they getting these embryonic cells? From aborted fetuses. Where else the hell would they get them? Or... Or stuff we're not being told about? How how much are they growing kids in Petri dishes and in a jar like, like some psycho sci-fi movie? Where they're growing these 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 people and then they're running experiments on them. I think I think they are. I don't know. I don't think it's too far fetched. I guarantee you they've probably already been trying to clone people y'all remember the movie the island 
where they were cloning people. So if you got in an accident, you had a clone, you bought a clone, they grew a clone, you get you you have kidney problems, whatever the case may be, they go get your clone and take them body parts out of there and then put them in you. It was it, it was a good movie. Was it disturbing? Yes. But we all know usually movies tell us what they're doing. And I don't think that's too far-fetched either. That's possible they're doing this stuff. Are you kidding me? The temptation for them would be just too great not to try to clone people. And do research on embryos for decades. And now with DNA and all of this stuff and everything and the the technology is just zooming, booming. Well, they're going to try to create the perfect human. That's what they're doing. I know it. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it's not that far-fetched. And all this, I mean, do they need more body parts? Is that why they want to keep abortion going? So Michael J. Fox can get cured of his Parkinson's disease? And I'm going to tell you right now, if I have Parkinson's disease, I don't want no part of that. I do not want no part of that. Not that, no. And plus, the research is already uh, over years that they had more results over adult stem cell research than they did with embryonic. There had been some documentation on it. It's insane. Supreme Court said the parents had the right to sue for wrongful death, still not fully claiming they were persons, but saying that they were somewhat sort of quasi persons and property of the parents. Once again, property of the parents. This is insanity. Harkening back to my slavery references, because with the IVF industry, we deem human beings as our property morally problematic. Lie number five we heard last night was that Kamala Harris was just for codifying Roe. That's all she wants to do if she's elected. She wants to do way more than that. In fact, she has publicly stated the Biden-Harris administration actually issued a public letter the last time the former Speaker Nancy Pelosi brought up the Women's Health Protection Act for a vote, calling for this this bill to be voted on pass. It passed the House. It failed the Senate because of the filibuster. One of the things the Democrats want to get uh, rid of. Um, This bill, they call it Roe 2.0, is actually much more dangerous than Roe versus Wade. It would mandate that every state in the nation must allow abortionists to set up shop in their nation, provide abortions for any reason, at any point of pregnancy, taxpayer funded, and if medical personnel refuse to comply and participate in abortion, they could be held liable. In the Senate, Kamal Harris was actually the co-sponsor uh, of this bill. So, five lies you heard last night. Thank you all for coming and enduring that. Well, there you go, folks. Wants to mandate it across the country. And if a doctor doesn't want to do it, to set up abortion clinics across the country, I don't know how these doctors and nurses who run who are in these abortion clinics sleep at night. How do they sleep at night? Obviously, they're not Christians. How can you be a Christian and be a liberal Democrat? I said it. Yeah, I did. I said it. How can you be a Christian and go for this? Look, there is no gray area. There's right and wrong. God said, Jesus said, you can't ride the fence. You need to be hot or cold. You cannot be lukewarm. Or he will spew you from his mouth. I'm paraphrasing, but you get the point. There's right and wrong. There's no gray area. Murder is murder. We could go on and on, guys. Um, Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share the video. Talk about it. Do your part. Um, and, And have a blessed day. And go vote.
Christians out there, go vote. When Trump said that there was statistically Christians don't go vote, I was shocked. I did not know that. I did not know that. I was like, what? Why would Christians not go vote? That's insane. This this is what's wrong with the country then, because you're not voting with your moral values. If you are a true Christian, get out there and vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for. Go do your own research, but get out and vote. And have a blessed day.